Hello, greetings Hastings Mystery Theater viewers. This is Dan LeClaire. I'm the program manager for Hastings Cable Access Channel and the behind the scenes guy for Hastings Mystery Theater. You may have heard Randall mention my name a time or two. First of all, I'd like to just thank everyone for all your likes and your subscribes and all the, the great comments you've been giving us over the years. Uh, and if you want to do a little more for us, because that in itself helps us so much, but if you want to do a little more, check the description uh, below this video and you'll see links to uh, our merchandise shop where you can buy merchandise related to Hastings Mystery Theater, a mystery theme, uh, as well as a link to donate if you want to do more than that. And you'll, you can see products on there like this and uh, check it out, see if you like that. Okay, with no further ado, here's your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Tonight, the corridors of mystery take us to 1943 for a Columbia Studios production, Murder in Times Square. Playwright Corey Williams has made an enemy of Longacre Lil, a Broadway vagrant who accosts people on the street asking for money. He won't give her any money, and when a drunk bumps into Williams and falls dead, Longacre Lil summons the police and accuses Williams of committing murder. But the investigation proves the drunk died of snakebite, and then others connected to Williams begin to also die of snakebite. The police suspect Williams, but they have no proof. Williams decides to solve the case himself and takes suspicion off himself. Starring as Corey Williams tonight is Edmund Lowe. He was born in San Diego in 1890, and after college, he nearly joined the priesthood, but instead he decided to become an actor. From 1919 through the 1930s, Edmund Lowe worked in B-movies, but his career went into decline in the 1940s. However, television resurrected his career in the 1950s, and he worked regularly until his death in 1971 at the age of 81. Our female lead tonight is Marguerite Chapman. She was born in Chatham, New York in 1918. She became a model and like so many others, that led to a movie career. She was an in-demand actress during the war years, but her career went into decline in the 1950s. She died in 1999 at the age of 81. Let's return to 1943 and enjoy Murder in Times Square. Thank you. I don't mind. 
mind being called a ham, baby dear, as long as I'm a hit. Nevins, uh, I imagine we could gross about 20000 don't you? Well, 21500 is uh, weekly capacity. Did you hear that, Dolly? My 10% is just exactly $2,150 per week. Not bad for a young fellow, just off the park, man. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, dear, the reviews aren't out yet. No, I'll underwrite the critics. With the exception of Adele Gissing. He wouldn't like a play if he'd written it himself. Well, Adele is an unusual man. Not unusual, unnecessary. Oh, Gissing is a very learned gent. Has he ever said anything about anybody that wasn't poisoned? His notice has practically made me a star. You made yourself a star, darling. <laughs> Well, look, somebody's working on Long Acre Lil. Listen, Lil, I'd like to renew my membership in your club. I've got five dollars. Might change my luck. You ain't eligible no more, Slocum. Hey, wait a minute. How does she get by with that phony club racket? She sold Broadway on the idea that she's their mascot of. Well, good luck, Charles. Mm. And everybody falls for it. If you don't, she'll put the evil eye on you and... Uh... Well, you know how actors are, don't you? Mm -hmm. The lady over there was like the other guy. I'm not surprised. Oh, here, uh... <clears throat> oh, Lil, give me a break. That's Ralph Slocum with Lil. Yes. Has he annoyed you, Lil? Only once. You got out of the cemetery. Careful. Does Corey know? Not yet. Give her this and tell her to keep it for the duration. It's precious. What's all the whispering about? Oh, uh, about uh, Long Anchor Lil. Corey, it just struck me. We don't need to wait for the reviews. If Lil invites you to join her club, the show is in. She has an uncanny instinct about knowing success in advance. Mm, so have I. Oh, let me go. Good evening, Mr. Williams. Ain't it about time you took a membership in Long Acre Lil's Club? There you are, Corey. I'm not interested. Corey! I don't have to bribe witch doctors to be a success. Witch doctor? Witch doctor, eh? Nobody can talk to Long Acre Lil like that. Oh, why don't you go home? All she wants is five dollars, Corey. For what? Well, to bring us luck. I wouldn't take a grand from you now. Don't they ever throw her out? Too many important customers think she's their good luck. Lil, forget about this, will you? For you, I'd do anything, Miss Matthews. But for this overnight genius, the only other guy who ever talked to Lil like that is dead. Well, here we are. Boy. Yes, sir? Give me all the latest editions. Say the man, Corey. Say the man, Frank. Here you are, son. Oh. Mm. Thank, Thank you, sir. Hey, listen to this. A hit, a palpable hit, Breathe the Faithful last night. Tompkins says the there's no reason why I shouldn't run as long as Tobacco Road. <laughs> this fellow says, that's all I wanted to know. I didn't pay five bucks down those notices written either. Can I take you home, darling? Oh, not for hours. I want to read every word of these. Anyway, I'm not the least tired. Oh, well, I've had enough. Going well. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow, dear. Good night, Corey. Congratulations. Oh, it's uh, 10 o'clock. Yeah, don't forget. Pay, pay that check, will you, boy? Yeah, I wish Corey hadn't done that with Lil. There's nothing to that evil eye story, is there? No, of course not. But Lil can be very unpleasant. Corey doesn't know what he's in. That's Corey Williams! He thinks he's going to be a big star on Broadway! <laughs> but he's too cheap to take the gas home! What about calling a cop? That's just what she wants. It seems she'd make it a lot more embarrassing for you than for her. Here, here, here. watch where you're going. On your way, on your way. Come on. Oh, you want a break, huh? You asked for it. What happened? What did you do? What did you stop him for, mister? Well, he attacked this lady. Why, he just stumbled. This mug is Corey Williams. He thinks he can get away with anything, and he's always getting into fights. Now, wait a minute. Yeah. What's all that? Who's getting into fights? That's no guy. fight. Yeah, he hit the ball on the plate. Hard off. Stay right where you are, buddy. Hey, you down there. Corey. Hey, you all right? You... This man is dead. What? Oh, he can't be. I didn't hit him hard. Oh, you admit you hit him, eh? <laughs> now, you've got some talking to do, fella. What happened? He got killed. Hey, what's this? Hey, officer. 
This hombre died of snake bite. Snake bite? What? Boy! Another way here. He knows snake bite when he sees it. He can tell you about it. He can't tell me nothing. He's the guy that killed him. And you better run along too, cowboy. When you get to see him snakes in Times Square, you should be in bed. Maybe you don't know it, officer, but this man just wrote a show about rattlesnakes. He's got all his mind. Now, listen, listen to me, officer. Right, I want to tell you something. You can't. Take it along. Take the cowboy, too. I'll stay and wait for the animal. Now, wait a minute. You hear? You can't do this to me. I'm an artist. You can't. Oh, well, no, 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 And then Supai came up and discovered it was snake bite. Supai. It's rather a curious name. Not Supai. S-U-P-A-I. It's the name of a tribe of Indians in Arizona where we once lived. Uh -huh. Now, how about calling this quiz program off? I'm a busy man. I'm... I'm... South Coast coffee. Yeah. Snake bite, eh? Okay. That guy died of snake bite, all right. He was full of booze and that speeded it up. So... You made it look like an accident, eh? That's the idea your play is based on, I believe. Why don't you stop being stupid? Why would I go around killing Barrel House, Tramps, and Times Square with what? You search me. Did you find any live rattlesnakes in my pocket? Mr. Wilson. Williams, Williams. Call you Williams, please. Uh, Mr. Williams. Right. Have you always been so, uh, how shall we say, entirely sure of yourself? Well, oh, maybe you'd like a story of my life. Yeah, it might prove very interesting. You know, I happen to be a student of abnormal psychology. Judging from your arrogance and egotism, I rather imagine your story might have some bearing on our little problem. So, we have an intellectual cop with theories. Well, well. Then maybe you can tell me how I killed that man and what motive I'd have? Listen, you tell us, brother. We don't have to tell you anything. How you might have done it, I can't say yet. But the motive is very simple. You've just written a play about rattlesnakes. You have an almost maniacal desire to succeed. It's conceivable that you've worked out some elaborate plot just for the sake of the publicity. If you're a psychologist, brother, you ought to give yourself a treatment. Anybody who could even suspect such a fantastic idea is out of his mind. Dr. Freud. Okay, Williams, you can go. That's the brightest idea you've had tonight. We may want you for further questioning. Call me up any time. I'll bring the case. I mean the snake. I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Williams, why I have please, a statement? Please, never forget your gentleman of the press. Surely you don't expect me to concern myself with the stupid mistakes of the police. Oh, uh, Miss Matthews, you take care of these gentlemen, please. Give them any information about them if they want. Come, George. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Thank you. Miss Matthews. I have a story for the Tribune, Miss Matthews. Come in. Come into my palace. So this is how you geniuses live. Lay off that genius stuff, will you? Yeah? Say, hey, listen. I've been riding in rodeos all over the country. I know the show business, but you turned into the most conceited, honorary ham I ever met. So you fell for it too, huh? <laughs> well, it's not really funny. I had to do it. Starved in this town for years. Well, I finally became desperate. I'd read about a couple of guys who announced themselves as geniuses, so I tried it, and it worked. You mean to say this is all an act? Sure, every bit of it. Oh, I know I'm lucky. But I found out you can get much further in show business by insulting people than by being decent to them. So, here I am. And tomorrow, I move to an apartment on the park. <clears throat> sure as they fool. Yeah. Well, George, you're the one guy I don't want to fool. I need somebody I can be myself with. I got a hit now, George. But I haven't got a real friend in New York. That doesn't sound as though it were worth it. Well, maybe not. But when you're starving, you can't think of anything but success. Even if you have to make believe you're able to get it. Hey, come here. Behold, beans. One can three times a day. And I wash them down with water. Yeah, I think I see how it is. And I'm keeping those cans in case I ever forget Well, we've been the gilded lily of Times Square. I shouldn't wonder. Oh, come, Will. I may have sunk beneath your social level, but we still have much in common. We have, shall I say, Corey Williams in common? Yeah. You don't like him either on account of that wife of yours. 
Well, you leave him to me. Mm, I'm sure your celebrated evil eye has lost none of its potency with the years. You're not by any chance going to his dinner tonight, are you? I ain't invited. Nor am I, Strange. Well, one gets ideas. Good night. Listen, uh, I'm going to attempt a little imitation of a, of a very uh, well-known Broadway character, which I hope you'll recognize. I hope, I hope you will. <clears throat> Here we go. <laughs> and as for you, Mr. Williams, I'll cut your black heart out and feed it to my cat, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Long Acre Lil, all right. Very good, Corey. And you, Doctor, how about this for your bedside manner? <clears throat> Now, if you'll just stay quiet for a few days and avoid stimulus, you must realize that you people of the theatrical profession subject yourself to abnormal strains. <laughs> I must confess that's my favorite speech. Ah, uh, you're still a good medic, Doc. <laughs> well, how are the boys in the back room doing? Say, Corey, do you, do you have to invite all the riffraff you ever ran across in Times Square? Why not? Some of those boys over there knew that I had something before any of you so-called big shots even gave me an audition. Hi, Horseshoe. <laughs> Hello, oh, Corey. Well, hey, glad to see you. Having what? a good time? Yeah, like I was just saying, only a couple of months ago I had to lend you a friend. And now look. Boy, do I know talent when I see this. Do uh, I know talent? Talk it up, Horseshoe. Talk it up, boy. Oh, say, Corey, I want you to meet a friend of mine here, Benny the Baboon. Benny the Baboon? Well, how are you, Benny? Hiya. <laughs> He's in the snake business, too. Snake business? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. I, I got that, uh, that, uh, you know, that zoo, the one right around the corner there, 42nd Street and 8th Avenue. Oh, Everybody yeah, knows yeah. it. <laughs> Betty's a baboon place. Uh, I'm Betty. Oh, yeah. You ought to come over sometimes and see my rattlers. Nice big, long, genuine rattlers. Thanks, this long. Scare you? Scared silly. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun, boys. Have a good time. Well, how do you like it, George? Uh, it sure is a real housewarming. The owner's over there. Over where? Doesn't he look stunning? Stunning? But she's the most beautiful girl. Hey, who's that with her? Oh, Del Gissing. Oh, Del Gissing? What's he doing here? I invited on the critic. But that one, that was the way you planned the show. And he called me a ham. Corey, I didn't think you mind being called a ham as long as you were a hit. I'm going to throw him out. But take it easy, Corey. Gissing likes parties. You might get him to write a second notice. Talent can have all this. I didn't get you out here to talk about Corey. Seems to have made himself a topic of conversation all over New York. All with his snakes on and off stage. Look down, please. Darling, what are we going to do? Now, I thought we'd settled all that. It's funny, isn't it? The owner McLeod begging a man to come back to us. Why should you when you can have any man in New York? Oh, I wish I'd never seen you. Good evening, Mr. Gissing. I'm sure you won't mind if I have a word with my fiance. Your fiance. Congratulations, and my best wishes. Why did you say that? Why not? I'm mad about you, darling. I don't care who knows it. I told you we have to wait. I know, but Mr. Williams. Yes, the well, gentleman in the engine hall wants to see you. Well, I'm, I'm busy now. I'm busy. I can't do it. I think you better come. He won't give his name, and he's pretty drunk. All right, all right. Coming in, darling. Not just yet. Then, uh, I will. Look what she did to me. 
And she's going to do the same to you. What's up, Bobby? What happened? All right, just had a little too much to drink. I'll take it. <laughs> Now listen, what is this? Funny, isn't it? I'm her husband, and you don't know it. You don't know something else. And you think you're going to marry her. You're not. Not as long as Odell Gissing's around. Odell Gissing? Sure. That's how we broke up. Over him. And she's still crazy about him. <laughs> I'll be running along, Corey. I... Do you know this man? Oh, yes. That's Rob Slocum. Who's he married to? Oh, now, Corey... Go on, go on, go on, tell me. He's married to Fiona McClare. Okay, uh, good night, Heather. Now, listen, Corey, lots of women have been in the old... Stop that kind of woman. Good night, Corey. Corey, I, I hope you'll forgive me, but I've got a violent headache. I just can't stay. Oh, I'm so sorry. I hope you'll be all right tomorrow. Oh, I will be. Don't worry, darling. Good night. Good night. Corey's done very well for himself, hasn't he? Yes, we think so. George, I want to talk to you now. Sure. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Uh, where I come from, most of the kids have learned the trick of hypnotizing snakes and milking the venom from them. So when Mr. Nevins read me Corey's play, I took sort of a natural interest in it. Or unnatural. I beg your pardon, sir? Well, Mr. Gissing means it's, uh, well, unusual. Yes, sir. If you're married to one man in love with another one, you need for a sucker. I'm sorry, Corey, but you kind of asked for it. <laughs> yeah, I guess I did all right. Well, I'll go and look after the drunks. Uh, don't do anything rash. If they can walk, I'll call him a cab and send him home. He's got a home. Slow. Slow. Come on, slow. I could feel him dead there in the dark. Did you kill him? Did I kill him? Listen to you. You can't pin your murders on me, Mr. Rattlesnake. Look at that hand. Just like the other poor devil. You've done it again with your snake bite. Oh. George! George, come here. He talked to me. I ain't got no time for them has-beens. He gave me the idea that he was going to crash Corey Williams' party. I figure that's a good angle for me, too. So I climb up the fire escape, and there he is. Why was it a good angle for you to crash William's party, Lil? Because he owes me something. I thought it'd be easier to get it from him if his 12 friends was there. You know how I work. Yeah, we know. And someday when we get a solid complaint on you, we're going to put you on ice for a long time. My racket's legitimate. No cops never laid no hands on me, and they ain't going to. All the big shops in this town belong to my club. They wouldn't stand for it. Well, all right, Lil. Wait outside. Well, she didn't do it. Well, it seems funny she happens to be around two times in a row when those guys die of snake bite. Well, that's a perfectly possible coincidence. She had no motive, no, no possible means to do it with. Corey Williams is our man. He's got something twisted inside of him that I'm going to work on. Send in Williams. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Williams. Now you're wasting a lot of time, Taylor. I've never wasted time in my life, Mr. Williams. Now it's never too late to start. I was out of this room for a long time. Now anyone could come through that window just as long as Lil did. Never saw Slocum when he was alive and he left this room with me. 
And on top of that, there isn't a live rattlesnake between here and the Bronx Zoo. They have some in a fake museum on 42nd Street. Have you ever seen them? No. It might be very interesting. This time you had a motive, Williams. You'd kill Slocum so you could marry Miss McClare. It wouldn't be necessary to use a live rattlesnake. A device could be used that would make the impression of snake fangs and inject the venom. All right. Let's play we're in court. Now, first of all, you'd have to prove that I had a snake or a device so that I had the poison. Next, you'd have to prove that I'm half-witted enough to kill a man in my own room and then scream bloody murder for everyone to come in and see what I did. Oh, you do yourself an injustice, Mr. Williams. That wouldn't necessarily be half-witted. It might even be very brilliant. You flatter me. But you also bore me. I'm tired and I want to go to bed anywhere. Make it a cellar. You think you've got enough evidence? Why don't you come clean, Williams? You're in love with Fiona McClare. Uh, I was in love with Miss McClare early this evening before I had a talk with Slocum. I may be in love with her again tomorrow, but tonight, I'm just tired. Where do I sleep, Table? Here, here, go outside and wait. Thanks. Oh, just a minute. What are all these things? Those. Oh, those are old rattlesnake cans. I use up a lot of snakes, and they keep better canned. Oh, I'd like to hang something on that wise cracker. Well, you'll get your wish, Sergeant, but it'll take time. He seems pretty sure of himself, don't he? Well, that's typical of such psychopaths. You see, they build an imaginary world for themselves in which they imagine themselves superior to everyone else. Then they think they can lie with impunity because in their own minds everyone else is so inferior that they can't see through the lies. Uh, but still we can't hold them. Well, I shan't be sorry. This is a case that needs more rope. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Hey, wait a minute. I don't want to take the rap in case he kills somebody else while we're on the job. Well, that's out of our hands now. If we were to arrest him now, any lawyer in town would have him out before noon tomorrow. Read all about it. Rattlesnake strikes again. Read all about it. X-ray. Read all about it. Times Square rattlesnake strikes again. There you are. X-ray. X-ray. Second rattlesnake murder in Pony Williams' apartment. There you are, ma'am. Beat the show. Table, boys. Doesn't that make you shudder just to look at him? It's marvelous. Come in. I want to talk to you. I'm in an awful rush. You can spare a minute for this. Slocum told me about, uh... All well, about you and Gissing. Is it true? How do I know what he told you? It is. Well, what of it? I never said I'd marry you. You let me think it. You wanted to think it. You're so conceited. You thought you could have everything in sight, including me. And I'd let you believe it. Because I wouldn't have been in the play if I hadn't. Oh, that seems clear enough. Shall we see them? Sure, sure. Come on, I'll, I'll show them to you. Well, there they are. Can't get no poison out of these here. Had them doctored. Had all the poison taken out. What have I said? Say, don't you fellas tell me about it, about this, because if, if they, they thought that the stakes weren't dangerous, they wouldn't come in to get the creeps, and that's why they come in is to get the creeps. <laughs> okay. But supposing you wanted to buy some new ones, where would you get them? Mm -hmm. Over to Joyce. Over to Joyce, they got snake farms. I see. Has anyone ever come in here and tried to buy snake venom from you? Only legitimate. I sent them over to Joyce. Oh. Who was the party? Let's see, it was the, uh... Oh, yeah, it was, uh... It was the gray... No, it was the white. No, no, it was the gray. The gray medical company. Said they wanted some fake poison to make it for arthritis. Sure wish I could find one. I've had it in this arm for five years. Can't raise any higher than that. Before I got arthritis, I used to be able to raise it way over my head like that. Okay, Benny. But in case anybody wants some poison, get in touch with us. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, you want to hear some more about my arthritis? Not today, no. 
I'm sympathetic. Fiona McClare? Gregory Nevin? Looks like you got all the celebrities on Broadway for customers, Doc. Quite a few. Only we call them patients. The Broadway's favorite doctor or best from Broadway's favorite actor, even if they don't know it yet. Huh. Modest as usual. That boy worked hard for his success, and he deserves it, even if it went to his head a bit. And doctor, the Gray Pharmaceutical Company's records show that several doctors were experimenting with snake venom. However, you were the only one in the theatrical district. Yes, I believe that's true. How did you use it? Well, when injected with other elements, it was harmless and even proved effective in some treatments of arthritis. However, the results as a whole were unsatisfactory, so we discontinued it. Did Corey Williams know you were using these treatments? Yes, we discussed it casually once, because his play dealt with snakes. And the idea of using snake venom as a medicine was so unusual. How, uh, how long could the venom be preserved? Indefinitely under refrigeration. What does it look like? Well, it's almost colorless, oily, something like olive oil. I still have a supply on hand. Would you like to see it? Might as well. Miss Ruth. Yes, Doctor? Bring me that bottle of Crotalus Herodus. It's in the refrigerator. Well, Doctor, would it be possible to uh, make some sort of device that would leave the same marks in the snake's fangs and also inject the venom? Yes, I should think so. For instance, two hypodermic needles attached to each other in some such fashion. It's gone, Doctor. Can't be. It's not in the refrigerator, and we've looked everywhere. All right, that's all. Thank you. When did you last see it, Doctor? Oh, months ago. I don't see how it could have disappeared. Did you have any burglaries? That's it. We found the officers broken into one morning. The burglars are apparently after a small quantity of radium. They took nothing else, or so we thought. Was it reported? Certainly. Police investigated, but they caught no one. Well, maybe the guy uh, took the radium as a blind. Yes, but who would know where the venom was kept? You, or a member of your staff, or one of your patients. As far as I, or members of my staff are concerned, you'll find the police made quite sure it wasn't an inside job. Uh, did uh, Corey Williams know where you kept the venom? He never saw where it was kept, but he knew it had to be cold. Well, that's sheer nonsense. The police said the burglary looked like the work of an expert. And Corey Williams isn't the housebreaker. It wouldn't be impossible to hire a burglar, Doctor. No, I suppose not. Do you keep a record of these patients that you treated with the venom? Naturally. To check on its effectiveness. I have a list of them here someplace. Yes, here they are. Oh, Gregory Nevin. Yes, the serum failed entirely in his case. Who's this uh, Lillian Lafferty? I'm one of the few people in New York who know Longacre Lil's real name. Oh. Well, those are the only ones that would interest us. Yeah. Oh, just a minute. This, uh, Herbert Borg. Isn't he the man who's known as Horsetooth Doctor? Yes, I, I think so. Thank you very much, Doctor. If I could be of any further help. You have been a great help to us, Doctor. It's obvious that the murders were committed with your stolen snake serum rather than the rattlesnakes themselves. Mm. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. Horsetooth's our man. He's got a record and he's a friend of Williams. I wondered at the time why he was at the party. But Horsetooth's gone straight for years. Yes, I know. That's probably why he thinks he won't be suspected. Where does that get us? Wait till we find Horsetooth. I tell you, I ain't stepped out of line in years. But you could steal a bottle from some doctor's refrigerator uh, just to oblige a friend and make it appear as though we're a real burglary. Now, well, what friend? Well, you have a lot of friends, Horsetooth. Corey Williams, for instance. Hello. Yes, this is Tabor. What? What is this? That, my friend, was the... Authentic sound of a snake's rattle. The snake I just came my bedroom. Who, who's this speaking? Yes, yes, we'll be right up. Here, talk to him some more. See if you can help his memory along. Come along. Flat. Odell Gissings. Jim's go to all that trouble with snakes. There's a million easier ways of killing people. He's obsessed with the abnormal. Look at his play. Yeah, but he makes two grand a week. That type of psychopath doesn't understand himself. He may think it's money he wants, 
What he really wants is power. Revenge for the wrongs he suffered. Well, he's sure getting it the hard way. Yeah. Think of the intoxicating excitement of it. Single-handed, he stirred up a whole city. He's got everybody from the Battery to the Bronx looking under their beds for snakes. may sound silly, Corey, but have you ever wondered about Henry Tree? How do you mean? He's just a strange little man. Just sort of a morbid interest in the show because it had snakes in it. The other night at the party, he said he could even hypnotize him. Yeah, but why would Tree kill a man at the subway? Horse rubber. Why would anybody, unless they're crazy enough to think there's good publicity in it? No, no, that doesn't make any sense. Probably not. But you can't help thinking. I'm going to try. I'm going to walk home. I'm not going to think a thought between here and there. <laughs> good night. Good night. And how is the king of the rattlesnakes tonight? Oh, now, look, Lil, why can't we call this thing off? I'm sorry for what I said the other night, and if you'll accept my apology, I'll be happy to join your club. <laughs> so the boy's yelling for mercy, eh? Now, he Lil... He's got something he can't finish. Oh, Lil, don't be that way. Don't you come crawling on your belly to me like one of your own snakes. I don't want nothing from you. What a pal. Good night, Lil. Think you big shot now. Think you can fool everybody. Well, you can't fool along, Ada Lil. Don't you think you can? <laughs> I'm on to you. I'm on to you every minute. <laughs> he must have fallen asleep after he phoned. He had plenty of time. Well, we'll wake him up. You got a key to Mr. Kissing's apartment? I can't let nobody in. Oh, that's different. Sergeant South Coast talking. You better get over here quick. Something's happened to Mr. Gissing. Yeah. <laughs> Take it easy, lady. Take it easy. Boy, did she scream. Hello? Sergeant South Coast talking. Get an ambulance over here quick. Right. We have every reason to hope that he won't. We should be hearing from the hospital any minute now. Did, uh, Mr. Kissing have any enemies that you know of? Everybody in New York has enemies, but they don't... Corey Williams. But surely Williams wouldn't kill a man simply because he didn't like his play. It wasn't only that. Corey... Yes? This is the table speaking. I see. All right. I'm sorry. He's dead. Miss McClare. That's all right, officer. I got here as quick as I could, Lieutenant. I... Corey Williams did it. He thought he was in love with me. He found out about Adele and me. And he killed Odell. Corey couldn't have done it. Why couldn't he? You heard what you just said. He wanted her and she loved kissing. But my dear fellow, Corey's no homicidal maniac. Oh, no? Don't believe them. They'd say anything to protect him. Anything so the show will run. Hello. Miss Tabor speaking. Good. Good. We'll be right up there. They just got Williams at his apartment. But what are we waiting for?
good evening. Or oh, morning. Well, well, imagine my surprise. Well, sit down, boys. Have a drink. No, thanks. You just dropped in to have a little chat, William. What did you do after the show? Hmm? Well, I, I met Miss Matthews and Super George at the tavern. Took Miss Matthews home and then I went for a walk. Why? Hmm. Alone? Mm hmm. When? Oh, between 12.30 and 2. Hey, what are you after now? You, for the murder of Odell Gissing. Gissing? When? Tonight. Or rather, this morning. About 1 o'clock. Just about the time you were taking your little walk alone. Well, what makes you think that I killed him? Oh, uh, incidentally, I presume he died of the conventional snake bite. Yeah. But after the snake was dead. Let's get going, William. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I hope you don't mind if I stay here. You see, you're a little jealous in the way you asked me if I had an alibi. You merely asked me if I walked home alone. I did. But I also have an alibi. Yeah? Yeah. Long as a lil. Who followed me all the way home treating me to some of her light banter. You'll have to prove that. Well, it's going to be awfully awkward when I do, because I'm news these days, gentlemen. You see, when you release me, it'll look as though Detective Tabor is determined to pin something on me. Well, here's another point. Your murderer is apparently a diabolically clever chap. Now, does that sound like me? Would I deliberately walk into a police trap in my own apartment without an alibi? <laughs> Now, boys, now your plot doesn't hold water. Now, you'll have to rewrite it. Have a little picked up. Right. In the meanwhile, I think it would be simpler for all of us if I just stayed here tonight quite quietly. Don't you, Sergeant? Yeah. I mean, uh, you might as well let him stay here, Chief. Put a man on. All right. Hey, Lewis. Yes. Take care. See that Mr. Williams doesn't leave the apartment. Okay. Thank you. And I'm sure that you'll feel a lot better about the whole thing in the morning. Good night. Well, why don't you go and talk to the cops? Oh, go on. Let them find me. The longer they don't know where I am, the longer Williams will be on the hot spot. Hey, did you hear they picked up horses? They picked up horses today. Did they? That's the way I hear it. They, he, he pulled a job of the doctor. Uh, Doc Blaine stole the snake medicine. Is that what they think? That's the way I hear it. He didn't have nothing to do with that snake medicine. Sure, sure. <laughs> yes. It was Corey Williams, wasn't it? You won't know too much, Benny. Ain't healthy. <laughs> Maybe I'll let the cops pick me up tonight after all. <laughs> Come on, Lieutenant, have a heart. Let him finish the third act. We're stretching a point as it is letting him go on at all tonight. There's a second act curtain. If we have to stop the play now, we'll have to get back all the money. Well, Lil, nice thing you here. Lil, you know this man? Sure. Corey Williams. Did you see him last night? No. Well, she followed me from the village practically all the way home. Mr. Williams, you are under arrest. What? She's lying. Yes, of course. Everybody's lying around here except you. Horsetooth must have been lying this afternoon when he admitted he broke into Dr. Blaine's office. Well, if he did, I had nothing to do with it. That's what Horsetooth said. He changed his mind once, though he may change it again. Taylor, if you're smart, you'll find Fiona McClare. Make her tell you about the other men who were in love with her. There were a dozen. One of them must have done it. I didn't. And you'll never convict me. No, of course not. That's the third act. You can't stop the show now. All right, go on and finish the show. That's big of you. South Coast, stick with him. Thanks, Lieutenant. Come along, Lil. I said, let's get rid of that makeup. That's what I thought you said. Hey, this thing's still loaded with vines. George, if you were a policeman and heard a lot of shooting, what would you do? Beg your pardon. You'd run to see what it was all about, wouldn't you? 
sure I would. But what would this hombre be shooting at so they wouldn't throw him in jail, too? How do you know it isn't alive? Look, I think Corey had something in the idea. It might have been one of Fiona's boyfriends. He's got to talk to Fiona himself. Give me two minutes. but I think I got him. Well, where's Tabor? I took Lilla headquarters for a statement. Hey, you. What goes? What? My profit, officer. My yes. profit. You've got what? Careful. Careful. If I'm not mistaken, I captured a very rare specimen of alien cultures, not to radio. You have what? I caught a moth. A moth? <laughs> Good night, officer. I better get this little chap back to Morningside Heights be before he suffocates. <laughs> Good night, officer. Good night. <laughs> what you don't see in this town, moths and towels. Bats and belfries. Hey, hey there was a general call out for this Corey Williams. Who, the rattlesnake guy? That's him. They hung it on him, but he got away. He's wearing a wing collar. Still got makeup on his foot. He's probably carrying a towel. A towel? Yeah, they think he's got a slug in him. Oh, what's the matter? Well, he just left for Morningside Heights. With a moor. With a moor? Sure. Hey, are you nuts? No, that's his game. Don't you understand? Come on, step on it. They can't be away too far. Come in. Hello, Corey. Hello, Doc. How are you? Say, Doc, I uh, I got Nick with one of those prop guns in the third act tonight. You fix it up? Oh, yes. That's nothing serious. I'll have you all right in just a moment. How'd uh, you happen to have a live cartridge in the gun? Oh, just one of those things, I suppose. Probably got mixed up with one of the blanks. I see. <laughs> Lucky those actors are bad shots, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Otherwise, I'd have something serious to report. <laughs> report? Yes, all gunshot wounds have to be reported. Not one like this. Just a matter of routine. enough of what you did for me, Melinda, for swell. Tabor could have made that evidence stick. He's really after your scalp. There'll be a news broadcast in a minute. He all the top item. I've got to get to Fiona to find out the names of those other men who are in love with her. Good morning. This is Nat the Nighthawk for the 2 a.m. news. The Times Square rattlesnake mystery took a sensational turn when police arrested Corey Williams star and author of the hit play, Death Sometimes Creeps. It took an even more sensational turn when Williams escaped. 
Watch out for him, Brother Nighthawks. The man is dangerous. Bet you could die laughing. Mm. Flash, the rattlesnake murder case is really breaking wide open tonight. Miss Fiona McClare, famous star of other days, and William's leading lady, was found dead at 1 o'clock this morning of rattlesnake bite. The hunt for William is being intensified, if that's possible, under the direction of Detective Lieutenant Tabor. Lieutenant Tabor issued a warning that Williams is probably dangerously insane. So don't take chances, folks. Call the police. Come on, get in here. Miss Melinda, uh, Lil and I left the police station at the same time. She kind of thought you'd like to talk to him. Well, I'm glad you did. It's a long time since Lil and I had a talk. Now, the times you interviewed me for a fan magazine, like I was a star myself. Well, you know there's no one on Broadway more important than you. Well, that's nothing more than the truth. Here, let me take your things. Uh, George, I'm sure Lil would like some beer. I know I would. There's some on ice in the kitchen. Yes, ma'am. Just a shame for a nice girl like you to get mixed up with a black crook like that, William. Yes. I'll put these in the bedroom. Good. Well, Lil, what's on your mind? I got a proposition, Miss Matthews. You treat me right, and I'll take the heat off Williams when they catch him and put the finger on the guy that really done it. Oh, you do know who did it? Sure I know. I know because I remember something that everybody else has forgot. That's for business. Remembering everything about everybody. Keeping clipping and cashing in. Who is it? <laughs> who is it? I got a fortune within reach of me arm and I should give it away. <laughs> I see. Well, what's your proposition? Corey Williams has got the bleed for talking to me the way he did. I want 10,000 bucks, and right out of his own pocket. The man might take a notion to tell the police you're withholding information. Try it, cowboy. I can talk to the whole police department, and there won't be no smarter when I get through than there was before. Can you prove I know just because I said so? But you do know who did it. Sure. But I haven't got $10,000. Well, I wouldn't take it from you, Miss Matthews, nor nobody but Williams. Elbows, July 1902. Young charmer, charm serpent, slowly in Lafferty's uncanny power over reptiles. The newest audition to the late Mr. Barnum Circus is an attractive young miss of 18, Lillian Lafferty, who fascinates audiences nightly with a command over a cage full of variegated serpents, some of monstrous size. Only for little. I'll get your things for you. You won't say anything until Mr. Williams is found? Oh, let him suffer a while longer. Even then, I won't tell who done it till I get 10,000 smackers in cash in my midst. Well, then there's nothing to do but wait. You bet. And if anybody gets any funny ideas, remember that Lil's been around a long time. She knows all the answers. No question about that. You must have been in show business once yourself. You sure was. I traveled the length and breadth of the country with my own ass 40 years ago. Really? Good night, love. Good night. As for you, Mr. Wild West, don't get no notions about talking to the cops, because I can handle them, too. So long. Corey, Corey, she knows who did it. So do I. She did. What? You heard her say she had a little night 40 years ago, didn't you? Yes. She had a snake charming act. I found her clipping in the back. She knows all about snakes. She's the only one who's gaining anything by these murders. She's not only blackmailing me, but anybody else seeking involved. But how could she have done it? Well, that's for us to find out. We've got to get our own evidence. Say, do you know where she lives, Melinda? Yes, she lives up on Ninth Avenue. I interviewed her there. Okay. When she's on a beat in Times Square tomorrow night, we'll go up there. There'll be some evidence. Snakes, poison. Or maybe that trick needle the table was talking about. Well, say you're short of it. I'll say her. Yeah. Now, look, Melinda, where did George and I sleep? 
We oh. need our strength tomorrow. Oh, look, I, I can't impose on Melinda. No, you can impose on her couch. I'll take the floor. Now, look, you've got to sneak out tomorrow morning and buy me some clothes. i got to get rid of these. Uh-huh. All right. Good night. Good night. from you, Mel. Maybe you have and maybe you haven't. But if I was to tell that Lieutenant Tabor that you've had an undying love for Miss Fiona for years and can prove it with clippings, you'd have a very uncomfortable time. And if I were to have you arrested for blackmail? I can talk faster than you, Doctor, and I've got less to lose. I don't mind giving you some money, Lil, but if you ever come back here, I'll kill you. You can count on me, Doctor. I'm a reasonable woman. Remember what I say in case you're ever tempted. I'll get the money tomorrow. Will I call for it? No, I'll send it to you. Good night. Good night, Doctor. Doctor, I've got a little matter to talk over with you. Who is this? Who do you think? Longacre Lil. 
Doctor, I've been thinking about poor Fiona McClare and them other murders. Hold it a minute, Lil. They'll be along. Yes, Lil? I'm a bit hard up for money, Doctor. And it might be good for both of us if you'd come over to my place and have a talk. Right. I'll be over. Well, it worked. Fiona McClare and the others, don't we? All I want is money for keeping my mouth shut. Okay, you win. I have some money here in the bag. I don't know how you work this, but I'm very glad to be here with you, William. Dr. Blaine's long frustrated love for Fiona McClare finally resulted in a peculiar form of insanity, which only Corey Williams suspected. Detective Lieutenant Tabor acknowledged the actor's important contribution in the capture of the deranged physician. Well, he got part of it right. You sure are an actor, and he sure was plum loco. You know, after I write a few more successful plays, I may take up detective work as a sideline. I've got a hunch I'd be good at that, too. some beans. <laughs> okay, I get it. Have some ham. Hello, greetings, Hastings Mystery Theater viewers. This is Dan LeClaire. I'm the program manager for Hastings Cable Access Channel and the behind the scenes guy for Hastings Mystery Theater. You may have heard Randall mention my name a time or two. First of all, I'd like to just thank everyone for all your likes and your subscribes and all the, the great comments you've been giving us over the years. Uh, and if you want to do a little more for us, because that in itself helps us so much, but if you want to do a little more, check the description uh, below this video and you'll see links to uh, our merchandise shop where you can buy merchandise related to Hastings Mystery Theater, a mystery theme, uh, as well as a link to donate if you want to do more than that. And you'll, you can see products on there like this. And uh, check it out, see if you like that.
please consider leaving us your thoughts in the comment section, as well as giving this video a like, and subscribing to our channel. Also, check out the link in the description below. Click the link to enjoy a free bonus Hastings Mystery Theater episode. Maybe you know how the general was killed. My dear Blor, can't you read? Eight little Indian boys traveling in Thanks again, to you our viewers, for your kind support, that enables us to continue bringing you these great old classic black and white movies. Great, sir. One of us is Mr. O. This is certainly a swell dish. Great night, great music, great gal. Shh. Listen to Gina. Oh. What's that? Hello, William. Answer me. I know about that knife. Just goes to show a fella never knows what's going to happen. <laughs> 